doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, America doesn't exist. Hello! Hi, everybody! Uh, what's going on? Doing something a little different this time. Uh, well, it's another tier list, but I am including uh, my brother, Drew, here, who's going to get the f*** off his phone before I break well, all of his fingers. Uh, I need to bring up the album sometime. Oh, so, so that to, way to you make know... make sure I'm looking at the songs and remembering uh, the uh, correctly, so... Drew's not as big a fan of this machine head as me. <laughs> so, uh, we're um, going to do all 10 studio albums. We're actually going to be putting them each in each tier as they go along. We're each going to have our own separate list. So, let us know down in the comments just how much you hate his. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this thing in the gym. And, ba bam starting off with 1994's Burn My Eyes. I think we'll start with you, Drew, and then we'll go to me. Okay. So, uh, where is Burn My Eyes going? Don't f*** this up. It's, uh, half of a good position, but, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with B for Burn My Eyes. Okay. You know, I let you, I let you live here. I let you, you know, I make you food sometimes. There's even a cat here for you to say hi to every day, and you disrespect me like this. It's still not an S tier. <laughs> uh, All right. I don't think I'll ever be. Oh God. Well, um, you're just wrong. But <laughs> why? Uh, because for me, the only like really memorable songs, or at least the songs I go back to the most, are Davidian and Old. I do like Death Church and Block. Mm -hmm. um, there and you go. Fire. Blood for blood. But, yes, there you go, speaking my language. But they aren't as memorable as the first two tracks, and the rest of the album is just very forgettable for me. Like, it's not bad, it's a solid, consistent album, mm -hmm. but it's not connecting with me as much as other, uh, with like other people. That's fine, okay, for sure. Well, for me, this is an easy S tier, it goes at the top. As I grow older and older, I have recognized and realized that Burn My Eyes is indeed my favorite Machine Head album, and arguably their best. There's not another album as honest and raw as this one, as angry and pissed off, in a very effective way, I should say. Uh, basically, all the songs he mentioned, A Nation on Fire is easily one of my favorite Machine Head tracks ever. Block, obviously, as well. None but my own. I've touched on that before when we did the tier list before of Kingdom and Crown came out. Just the riffs on that are easily some of my favorite Machine Head riffs ever. I'm Your God Now is a fire track. Like, they, they had the balls to put like a ballad-esque song on their debut, and I commend them for that. This is an absolute classic. Uh, for a long time, it was my second favorite Machine Head album. It is now my favorite. Uh, we'll get to my second favorite uh, eventually. But bam Let's go ahead and move along to 1997's The More Things Change. So The More Things Change for me is basically they took everything from Burn My Eyes and made it a thousand times better and more focused hmm. and much more groovier and memorable and catchier. Okay. I love every single track off this album from Ten Ten Hammer and Take More Scars to Down to None, Front Lines and Violate. Mm -hmm. It's for me their most consistent and likable album and it's my personal favorite and it's definitely an S tier for sure. Okay, so I, I love it so goddamn much. Okay, that's uh. Bay of Pigs. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, yeah, oh. The, the whole album, honestly, yes. Uh, but before I go any further, what is your favorite track off of Burn My Eyes? Uh, Dominion. I mean, that's very okay, obvious. uh, mine has to be a Nation on Fire. Uh, honestly, it's, pro it's probably a Nation on Fire. Although I will say though, even though Dominion is my favorite, I just I wish they would play other songs. I wish they would play more deep cuts. I am so grateful to have like gone to their uh, 25th anniversary tour for Burn My Eyes, so I got to see the entire album front to back, and it was uh, glorious, to say the least. It's just it's so weird. They have their Electric Happy Hour where they play their albums in their entirety, no problem, like Jared and Rob and stuff, but they just never play deep cuts live. Like, I just, I, I don't think get it. Yeah, I, mean, I guess so. Yeah, the more things change, is a very very excellent album great great follow-up to burn my eyes uh every time i hear the intro to take my scars like I, it's just hype it's just straight up hype like pure unadulterated hype struck nerve has to be my favorite song off of here it's uh like just punk thrasher it beats the value and, and it just like goes into this just 
ominous spacey bridge that's just killer and then it, it, just the whole rest of the song is just this friggin bouncy groove uh love it and i love 10 ton hammer always have love the extended version that actually has like a longer intro which is just killer why did they cut that out why did they do that <laughs> um but yeah all the songs drew mentioned down to none killer track violate is so awesome spine 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 dude this is such a killer song easily one of my favorite machine head tracks blood of the zodiac and blood of the that, i might have said blood of the scribe earlier that's a that's a lamb of god song i don't even think i heard you say anything about <laughs> okay <the song>. okay <laughs> then I, anyway. I, was, I was thinking in my i was thinking in my head but that's a lamb of god song no blood of the zodiac yeah killer song it falls short of burn my eyes for me uh ever so slightly i mean blistering and bay, are, bay of pigs are great tracks there's just ones that don't go back to uh that often it, it's cohesive enough to where it's a classic and it will go in A tier for me. What's your favorite song off of this? That's a good question because it used to be Tent and Hammer and then it used to be Violate but now there's like so many tracks <laughs> that I could say are my favorite. Right. Um, I, I mean, I guess lately out of all the tracks that I've been going back to uh, the most, it's gotta be Bay of Pigs. Huh. Like, that song just goes so goddamn hard like that <laughs> and, and Down to None. Oh yeah. Yeah, Doom is all Doom can get. The guitar tone, get out of here! Like ew, mm. a stank face every time. That's yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, all right. Uh, moving along to 1999 and the Burning Red. Trying to get into rap metal. Somewhat, yeah. No, honestly. But, yeah. Really cool thing about this album is that Ross Robinson produced it, and he is freaking awesome. Produced like the first couple Corn records, as well as Slipknot, Limp Bizkit, legendary, obviously. They were working on this album at the exact same time as Slipknot's debut. The same place, same studio and everything. They all became friends. And they toured with uh, Cold Chamber. Mm -hmm. like them too. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, it's definitely a mixed album for me. Half of it is very same. boring and not good, and the other half is like very good. Uh, the first opening tracks, um, Enter the Phoenix and Desire to Fire, were slow burners for me. When I first heard this album, it really caught me off guard because I was... Yeah, same, oh. same here. When, when, no, honestly, yeah. I remember. Sorry to cut you off, but I remember. Yeah. In, I remember in high school, like going through their dis discography up to, onto the Locust at that point. And when I got to the Burning Red, it sounded more funky. Like there wasn't much uh, distortion and gain in the guitars. It sounded muddier. Um, and then Rob just started rapping in the middle of Desire to Fire. I'm just like, excuse me. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, 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 it took me by surprise as well. Yeah, uh, and honestly, I, I was trying to speed run through the albums when I was first listening to them. Boo. Getting ready for the first Machine Head show in 2018 that I went to. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, the tracks that I do really like, like I said, the first two tracks, and then The Blood, The Sweat, The Tears, yes. From This Day, yes. uh, Exhale, The Vial. Yes. Definitely the best track off the album. Oh, right? yes, agreed. All, all of what you just said, yes. Motherfucking <laughs> Devil with the King's Card. Devil with the King's Card that, is fire. That bridge always gets me. Yeah. When I feel for you, cause your eyes Freaking great. Walls cut down. Do, 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 Yeah. And it gets all pretty and then it just like destroys you. <laughs> I love what the. Uh, who was the drummer at the time? Dave McLean. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. No. So, so he was there for that long. Yeah. Uh, he was on The Morphing Strings as well. Oh, uh, oh. Chris Contos yeah, yeah. only played on uh, Burn My Eyes. It was a, a, a different guitarist other than Rob, though. But what the drummer does during the uh, pretty bridge, like yeah. with the bells. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like the intro to Five, which is just a nasty song. Like like the fucking <laughs> like on, on the toms, it's great. Endless great songs on here, like for sure. I will say though, their cover of Message in the Ball is not it. Uh, unnecessary. I will say that. It's not bad. It's not something I go out of my way to listen to. It's crazy that it's like one of their most played songs on Spotify. It's, it's, so that's crazy to think about. I love Silver. I Defy is a good track. I keep thinking Silver is called Sliver. I think it's I think Silver. Yeah. Honestly, like it, it, it's a really good album, like front to back. Even the title track is just vulnerable and great. Where are you putting this? Uh, I'm gonna put Squarely and C. Okay, that's fair. That's usually where I go as well for uh, the Burning Red. Because it's not what I look for in Machine Head, 
but at the same time, it's actually a really good album, so I think I might actually be a little somewhat controversial and put it in B, because I actually really kind of like The Burning Red. All right, so 2001, I think a week before 9-11, or like on 9-11, this album was released. Supercharger. What is this garbage? What, what, what is this garbage? What is this? What the hell is this? Yeah, uh... Not good. It, mm, yeah, I mean... They were trying... I, I don't know if they were, like, trying too hard or not trying hard enough to continue on with the rap metal stuff. Either way, like, they executed it so much more poorly compared to The Burning Red. Like, this is definitely my least favorite album from them. What gets me is, like, there are only a couple songs of which Rob actually raps on. Desire to Fire, From This Day, and I think that's it. Well, like rap metal, new metal. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. For yeah, some, I think for but I didn't, I didn't really consider that. Like you know, yeah. Supercharger to me is not a bad album. It doesn't persuade me in the way that the Burning Red does. It's a whole lot more. Yeah, let's just follow in the same vein that we were already going in with sort of half-baked songs that very thrown together. Sort of, yeah. There are a lot of tracks I don't really care for. Like, I mean. Kick You When You're Down, I don't really care about the title track. But, like I said, it's not a bad album. I love, love Only The Names. Uh, that's easily the best track on here, in my opinion. Uh, Bulldozer always goes hard. Um, it, as, you know, goofy as it is, it, it, I mean, that, that outro is like, jeez, hearing that bass bend is, dun, 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 is epic. Awesome, great. I really like Definite Silence and Trepanation. Nausea's a good track. Blink Generation's pretty cool. Other than that, yeah, I don't really like much else on this. I think the rest of it's okay. Uh, American High is pretty funny. What do you think? F. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting this in F? Yeah. You don't like it that much, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, that's a shame. I'm gonna put it in D. Uh, I, I, I mean, like I said, Definite Silence is great. Only the names is fantastic. I really wish they played that one live a whole lot more. All right, uh, Phil Demo. Phil Demo comes into the band 2003 slash 2004. If you're an American, uh, through the ashes of empires. Tell us your thoughts, Drew. For me, uh, this is kind of like the Burning Red in the sense that half of it is like really good and memorable, and the other half is better than the Burning Red and is a lot more consistent. Uh -huh. But still, for me, it there are uh, some songs that are like very forgettable that I just I, I okay. I've listened to this album several times. And I just know that know they're good. And I look at the names, but I just don't remember how they go. But the songs that stick out really stick out. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I feel like I would give this the highest B or lowest A. For sure. So you said Exhale of Vile. Well, I'm not gonna put it up there just yet. So Exhale of Vile was your favorite off of Burning Red. Yes. As is mine. And then for Supercharger, it's Bulldozer. Okay, yeah, and all the names for me. So, Through the Ashes, you said B or A? Uh, like, I'll give it the highest B. Okay, well, the way I do it on this channel is it doesn't really matter what order they're in. If they're in the tier, they're in the tier. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so I would, uh, just B. Yeah. B? Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, honestly, um, Through the Ashes is a very good, very great record. Some, like... Probably my favorite album lyrically, overall. A complete um, stark contrast within a two-year span of Supercharger and this. Yeah, even though you can still hear like some like leftover kind of ideas from the Supercharger era, like maybe Bite the Bullet, uh, Riff Wise, or Wipe the Tears, All Falls Down. Maybe a little bit of Left Unfinished too. They keep it interesting. It's their comeback album. Like it's the album that got them re-signed to Roadrunner in America because they didn't have a label in America at the time and all of a sudden they're blowing up in Europe and like, oh my God, will you guys come back with us? Uh, yeah, have you heard Imperium for crying out loud? Easily like top three me Megadeth. Machine Head songs. <laughs> in the Presence of My Enemies. Yes. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. These days turn blue gray. Elegy, dude. Elegy. Dimebag Daryl's favorite song off this album. For crying out loud. Of course, Descent Shades of Night is fantastic. Seasons Wither is a killer track, as well as Vim. Uh, for me, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like you said, like like half of it is just great killer. Uh, the other half is just okay. 
it, it's it's decent. It's it's pretty fire. It's hard for me to say. I like it more than the burning red, but I'm gonna put it in B anyway. All right. Uh, Ferrisol. Imperium. Yeah. Yeah, but, without a friggin' doubt in hell. But close seconds would be Days for Blue Gray and uh, In the Presence of My Enemies. Oh, yeah. All right. The Darkening. The Barkening. The Barkening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. What's, what are your thoughts? How has it shifted over time? It's uh, gotten more consistent and memorable for me. Uh -huh. I, it's been getting more listens. Lately. Okay. I would probably... Probably put an A. It's like mm. it's like near perfect. It's not quite S because there are still some things that okay. I don't quite like about it. Uh, especially the last song for all the arms. I just feel like it's too lengthy. You mother. <laughs> That's easily one of the best songs on the album, without a doubt in hell. If we're talking about like songs being too lengthy, well, first that comes to mind for me is Wolves. Well, that too. Yeah, that that too. Uh, for me, Wolves is very much just like a wanky song. Like just a lot of wankery. Here's a whole bunch of riffs thrown together and uh, semi discernible lyrics, I guess. <laughs> Still killer, killer song, but um, don't you dare, dare badmouth a farewell arm in front of me. I will uh, sick, sick the wolves on you. Because it's, it's, you know, it's really sad that a boy can be torn apart by a pack of wolves. <laughs> I. Quite. <laughs> Alright, what else do you think about the album? Oh, the rest of it is absolutely <laughs> fire. Like, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah. Like, the opening track, Clenching the Fists of Descent, I I love the vocals mm -hmm. that Rob does at the beginning. I wish he would have done, yeah. like, another measure of those vocals. Or, like, I, I don't know. Like, like, during the acoustic marching intro? Or the first verse? Uh, no, just, like... Just during the acoustic, I guess. Yeah, or, like, or, like, or, like, or, the like, like the vocals that you hear, like, way in the background? Well, that opened the album. Or, yeah. or the, Behold! Yeah, that, 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 yeah, yeah. Just, the black the, like, like, if they would have added another measure of those vocals, then go into the acoustic. Yeah. It's, it's just a little detail uh, that, like, I, do, I just... I do really like that, like... I love the way it sounds. It's, seriously, and that's the way really did it. unique. No, honestly, I, I actually really agree with that, because it, it's, it's very... like, it's really just the opening of the, of the album. It just sounds so bleak and dark and just it, it, ooh. it just sounds very um just captivating and and, and like yeah uh, uh, and then just just the, out of nowhere and like like middle eastern s and <laughs> yeah. well basically like, yeah. And stuff. Yeah. yeah this album was like written on uh, just on the back of the fact that the iraq war was tearing the u.s apart politically like throughout the years they were writing this album like in the middle of the Bush administration, they were pissed about it, and that's where Clenching the Fist of Descent comes from. And just the production on this album, the guitar tone, and all of it, like, is pretty much unmatched on, on any Machine Head album, in my opinion. Because, like, just when Clenching the Fist of Descent, like, finally kicks in after the long, multi tracks uh, uh, snares and, like, acoustic guitar lines and stuff, just the layers upon layers of instrumentation. It just sounds so amazing when it finally ki kicks in and, and beats you in the face. And of course, I mean, I can go on and on and on about that song, but Beautiful Morning is easily one of my favorite Machine Head songs of all time. That song never, ever gets old. The production is so good. The riffs are so good. Oh, it just comes together so freaking good. So perfect. So well done. And of course, the Thrasher piece that is Aesthetics of Hate. I, I can go on and on about that song as well. And the uniqueness and melodic nature of now I lay thee down it's just still so crushing and like that main riff is so tasty it's ah, so simple it's yeah so, like now I lay thee down even Halo is just so ah. <laughs> yeah, now I lay thee down is such a simple song like simple sounding song and stuff but so crushing and, and catchy and stuff like when I was like last year when I was still walking and working working in Delhi and we're listening to this album, mainly that song that I laid it down. Yeah. Uh, I just constantly have it stuck in my head throughout the day, and I would just randomly, Seriously. I would, I would randomly sing the chorus out loud, and sometimes my coworkers would hear me just asking what I'm singing. Yeah, no, it's a great song. It, it really is, like, the catchiest song on the album, one of the catchiest songs I've ever done. It does get stuck in your head forever. It's so good. It's such an outlier, but it fits so well at the same time. And, and Slanders has got some of the coolest friggin' riffs ever. And of course, Halo. I, I love Halo. I love it to death. Easily some of the best riffs, like one of the best progressive thrash metal songs ever. 
but I really wish that they would stop closing shows with it because it's like so predictable at this point. It's, it's like them opening up with Imperium. Yeah, which is fine, but like at this point, it's like, okay, we know you're going to play Halo. It's almost it's it's kind of like Lamb of God always closing with Redneck, I, or at least most of the time. It's like we expect that, so it's just like. Okay, show, show's basically over at this point. I thought it would be late to rest that they both were. Not usually. Uh, it, it depends, I guess. Uh, but yeah, um, you're on crack for playing it in A. Uh, it goes in S, where it belongs. It's my second favorite machine. I, I, here we go, there it is. All right, 2011, the highly anticipated follow-up, Unto the Locust. Well, honestly, I, for me personally, the entire album is really, really good and consistent, but the first yeah. five songs are, like, obviously Me, the best. That's, that's exactly how I feel about it. Like, literally, like, the first five songs are, are easily some of the best songs they have ever written, period. Literally, like, Pearls Before the Swine is actually a really good song. I, I, I really like it. But with Who We Are, literally, it would have been made so much better if they didn't have, what was it, Rob's Kid do vocals? I don't know. Or whoever. Like, literally, if they would have taken that out and just had Rob or someone else do the vocals, it would have been so much better. Like, that one I, change would have made it so much better. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just one aspect of the song. I, I just, don't understand people's deal with it. Like, I think it's fine. I kind of feel the same way. Like, I don't care for it at all. It is kind of like a weird mood shift, but it's a killer song regardless. But yeah, I don't care for Pearls of the Swine too much. That song kind of comes off to me the same way that Wolves does on the Blackening, just like some riffs pulled together, like strung together, and not that coherent of a fashion. The outro is hella cool though, um, but god, those first five freaking songs, dude. I Am Hell is like one of the fastest freaking songs Machina had ever wrote. Uh, Be Still a No it is, god damn, it's like a top ten she had song as well as Locust. I can never get over how good those freaking songs are, and just the production on this album is also so killer. It's not as layered as the Blackening. Like they literally admit to using only one track on the left, one track on the right, so that way it sounds better live, which is smart, and it still sounds killerful because their guitar tones are so good. This is the end is obviously a great tra uh, track as well, but Darkness Within is my favorite Machine Head song. Period. Hands down. End of story. Every time they play it live, I'm singing every single song as loud as I can, even though my voice can barely even take it because it's right in the middle of the show and I can, I, I can barely even sing at that point. But yes, uh, this for me... Well, where is it going for you? Uh, well, also, we didn't say our favorite Blackening songs. Uh, Beautiful Morning for, for, for me for Blackening. Uh, but I'm going to go with Now I Lay You Down. Okay. And don't you dare talk bad about Fair Weather Arms again or it's... Uh, um, you'll wake up without toes. And for me, Unto, <laughs> Unto the Locust, my favorite song off of it, plus my favorite Machine Head song of all time is Locust. Oh, wow, well, yeah, that's, um, that's a that's a fair opinion. Me, me personally... Uh, darkness Within for me, but yeah. Me personally, I, I feel the same way about it as I do with the Blackening. I'm also going to put it in A. Okay, alright. Well, that's exactly where I'm putting it as well. It's way up there like for sure without a doubt like it, it's a killer album but like we have so much greatness in the first five tracks um and then pearls before the swine and who we are are just good like decent well the only thing that keeps it from s in, in in my in my opinion but that's what it is just my opinion who cares uh moving on to 2014's criminally underrated bloodstone and diamonds take it away drew <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bloodstone Diamonds, uh, for me, this was a bit of a grower. Mm -hmm. The first seven tracks off of this album are definitely the most memorable and the best ones off the album, and the last five are kind of eh. Rude. Yeah. I mean, uh, two of them are like somewhat like interlude-ish songs, but yeah. Yeah, uh, for me, Now We Die and Killers and Kings start contrasts. Uh, when it comes to the sound of them, but really great openers. Uh, oh my god, yes. Especially Now We Die, holy shit. Dude, that, yeah. That song uh, it, used to be my favorite. It never really gets old for me, like how good that song is, especially in a live setting. And when they get to the bridge and like slow it down slightly, so it goes like... Like, god damn. Yeah. Are you ready to die? Yeah, just, it's great. 
Easily one of their best songs for sure. Yeah, and then Ghosts Will Haunt My Bones. Yes. Like one of the best Machine Head songs. Hands down. That, that, I agree. that song is a top 10 for me for sure. For sure. Yeah, that, the great melodies for sure. The, the riffs, the vocals. Like, they really wrote a lot of killer songs on this album. It's so overlooked. My favorite off the album, Beneath the Silk. Oh, yeah. Heavy, like, down tune. Like, the F sharp level of frick. Night of Long Knives was like yeah, one of the songs that I was like oh, like somewhat I mean I thought it was a good song at first but it's, it's one of the few tracks on here that like I've just gotten to love more and more and more over the years uh, for some reason but it's still not even close to one of my favorites on the album like you said Now We Die Killers and Kings is a really great Ghost Walk My Bones Beneath the Silt so heavy but dude Eyes of the Dead, it, it, like yeah. some of the craziest riffs on that, and then the breakdowns yeah. too. Like goddamn, you said the last five tracks are, are, are that good or whatever. For Not that memorable. Yeah. Another song that cr that crew on me a whole bunch, like because it, it's it's so weird. Like this is easily one of my, like probably my third favorite Machine Head record because of the quality of all the songs. There was a couple songs like like I mentioned, Night of All Knives. That just took me a while to like really get into, and another one of them was "In Comes the Flood." Like, damn, like it, 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 a political junkie I am, it, it hits even harder. It's great. It's a killer track, front to back. Even "Damage Inside" is like harking back to that Burning Red era, and it does it really effectively. "Game Over" is such a killer track that I've always loved. Super thrashy, great riffs. And it's about their old bass player who was kind of a piece of shit, and just the attitude that song brings. And, and then the despair and like also like hope at the same like optimistic hope at the same time that imaginal cells brings it's a great track and then take me through the fire is just meh I think it's okay it's it's a it's a fine closer it works that as nothing more in my opinion yeah for me honestly I'd probably put it in S I, I love this album to death where are you, where's it going for you uh I'm gonna put it in B uh, okay. Remember what I said about your toes and your fingers? Do you enjoy having those? All right, fine. All right, cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we get to 2018, the long anticipated catharsis. Oh. This is the opposite of cathartic. <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, God. We, we thought Machine Head was in. Deep doo doo this time. <laughs> the, fact, this. <laughs> the fact that they called this catharsis is a crime. <laughs> Tell us more, Drew. I mean, the first, what, three tracks? Volatile Catharsis Beyond the Pale. Yes. Thank you. First three tracks, and then, what is it, California Bleeding and then Triple B? Or is it? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh,. I would say those five tracks are like definitely the most memorable out of all of them. At least um, Triple Beam, Volatile Catharsis, and Beyond the Pale. Like those songs are actually pretty good, even though yeah. the lyrics are kind of like cringe. Wide. Yeah. <laughs> um, Same goes with Bastards. It's like all right, but the it's a fine song if you guys were like Dropkick Murphys or something. <laughs> but, but the rest of the album is a, it's just a giant what the fuck. It's like a Supercharger 2.0, but like not in a good way. I kind of slightly disagree with that. There wasn't any other songs that you were like, okay, I hella dig this. Not really. Let me double check. What, Heavy Lies to Crown? Uh, yeah. And that one was okay. Yeah. I remember uh, hating um, what, Razor Blade Smile? Was that the one for <laughs> Let Me Kill Meister? Yeah, I thought that song was pretty cool. It was their take on like Motherhead style speed metal, but with like flashier guitar work. Yeah, I mean, there are some highlights here and there, but a lot of duds. Like I mentioned, Bastards, like that's just a Dropkick Murphy song if it was like heavier, I guess. <laughs> uh, California Bleeding is easily one of the worst Machine Head songs uh, ever written. Uh, Beyond the Pale is an obvious ripoff of Strapping Young Lad. I don't know what, what they were thinking. And it's funny because when I first heard that song, I never heard Strapping Young Lad. I never heard any of their either. songs. And I heard that song, I was like, oh, this goes so hard. And now, like, I realize that Love is by far and away the superior track. <laughs> the title track's pretty good. The volatile goes pretty hard. Even though there are a couple of lyrics I think are cringe, uh, but Rob's heart is in the right place. 
I will say that. Uh, Triple Beam is probably my favorite song on the record. Even though over time, my affinity towards that song declined a little bit. I don't like the bridge of the song, but I do like the crushing breakdown before the final verse. And the verse is really, like, the storytelling of the song is genuinely great. Like, it, it's genuinely captivating, and I really like it. It's like a really dark story. Kaleidoscope's a, a fairly decent track. I really like Screaming at the Sun. Uh, Behind the Mask is like a discount Opeth song. It's like Machine Head trying to write a, an acoustic Opeth song. My favorite track used to be Beyond the Pale, and I still like that track, but mm -hmm. I've grown to like the title track a lot more. Yeah, I agree. The title track is pretty fire. But yeah, everything else is not too good. Psychotic is kind of cringe. Eulogy is boring as hell. Gr it. Grind You Down is it, it, not very interesting. I mean, sure, like, the, the riffs are kind of dazzling, and it's down to that F sharp, but I don't really care for it. Wait, I don't. What? what? What song was Tune Down? Grind You Down. Really? Yeah, that's down to F sharp, like Beneath the Silt. Hey, to like I said, I'm a much bigger Machine Head fan than he is. Uh, where's, Mach where's, where's Catharsis going? <laughs> Where is all the Machine Head going? <laughs> uh, uh, D for duds. Okay, that's that's fair. It, it'll also go in D for me. Now, oh, what a comeback album. Oh my goodness. I need to actually re-listen to this. Cause it's, it's, it's been a minute since I've, I've actually uh, listened to anything from it. Aside from Slaughter the Martyr, but we'll get to that. Uh, of Kingdom and Crown. At least in 2022. What are your thoughts? This this album is weird. There are really yeah, it's kind of another half and half type album for me. But the the album as a whole, like at least for the most part, Rob's vocals, the way I don't know if it's the way he's singing or the way it sounds, or just I don't know something about it is just off to me. Like ever since. Catharsis and the singles released between Catharsis and this album. Right. And just the style that he continued going with them doing a concept album for the first time and the concept is really cool and what inspired it is right. really cool. Oh yeah. But it's just Rob is just off. I, I, I can't really explain it. And also uh, Choke on the Edges of Your Hate uh, when I first heard that song even now to this day it all just sounds like they're trying to go way too fast for what they're trying to go for like like yeah it's meant to be very thrashy and fast they're trying trying to go for that like you know back to what they really used to do yeah but, like it's just i just feel like the timing is off like they just they were trying too fast too fast <laughs> too furious for sure but i, was, I thought I, I i mean i personally think that track is pretty like just visceral and just relentless I, mean, I do see what you're saying though like i think it is kind of like too fast for its own good but like at, at the same time like it easily some of like the most like blistering guitar work like that they've ever done like especially riff wise but yeah just some of the musical and vocal choices that they decided to do on this album just it just sounds cliche you know it just sounds like yeah stuff, just sounds like that's stuff that they've already done just with new lyrics and new instrumentals and stuff like okay. that and just that's a very fair and honest critique. I, w I will say though, like the opening track, Slaughter the Martyr. Oh my like, f***ing god, it's so goddamn good, dude. When they played that shit live, I lost my sh that, that, that single opening note with a delay. Do, do, do. I was bouncing off the walls, dude. I was screaming, even though the crowd was silent waiting for the song to start. It's like, and if my friend Alex comes up to me like with, with, with some drinks, like, here, drink this. I'm, I'm just like, she's always trying to say, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm just like, He's playing my favorite song off the new album. <laughs> that made some people laugh. Like, and lo and behold, like when when Slug the Martyr like finally kicks in, what a great song! Like, sure, like some of his vocals on the rest of the album, like I said, like are, like like you said, seem a, a, a bit off. You know, not as much originality or or tunage. I, I, I don't know what the right word to describe it is, but like, but like that opening sequence of Slug of the Martyr is not very comparable. When it comes to most Machine Head songs, and then when it finally drops in, it gives you that like vibe of like the way that clenching the fist of descent comes in. Except it, it's even more punishing and just it's like a friggin' earthquake just starts destroying the environment around you. It, it's killer. And then the verse comes in, it's just like okay, and then it goes back to that riff again. And then then the chorus comes in, it's actually just fire. It, like there's a whole lot of give and take on this record. Like it's like you, you, you pretty much nailed it perfectly. It's them painting by numbers, sticking to their guns. Uh, you know, 
it, it sounds like a machine head record. And with that being said, there's a lot of killer songs on here. My, my Hands Are Empty has been one of my favorites for a couple years at this point because they put it out like, she's like 2020. Yeah, it was on that three song EP. No, no. it wasn't. Uh, it was before that. No. That was because that was put out in 2021. So it was like a year before oh, that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Unhallowed is a great song. Um, Unhoused? Unhallowed. Oh. Unhoused. They're, they don't have they don't have a home anymore. <laughs> Rob Flynn got kicked out of his home. Shit, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, not as much memorable from like the rest of the album, aside from a couple great songs that, like "Arrows and Words from the Sky." That's definitely easily the, one of the best Machine Head songs. That's like, my favorite off the album. ever written. Yeah, yeah, and, and the others are, are, are pretty pretty fire. Like "Kill Be- Thy Masters" is pretty cool. Become uh, the fire. No, 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 not "Kill Thy Masters." Uh, "Kill Thy Enemies." Yeah. yeah. Uh, what did you say? Begun the Firestorm is just a worse version of this. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Oh my god. Uh, but it's still, like, fine. It's a good album. Like, I liked it. I think it, it was it was rather swell. I liked it. <laughs> oh my I god. I was good at it. <laughs> yeah, I felt alive. Jeez. All right, all right, Walt. Where are you putting the uh, of Kingdom of the Crown? Uh, Walt. Place a machine head album wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not waiting any more Walt, so you gotta put the machine head album in one of these tier lists. I'm not playing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I'm just like, I'm leaning towards like B and C for me. I would say like the highest C. So, well, C. it doesn't matter at this point. All right, well, I guess so for you, but for me, Kingdom Crown goes in B. I, li- I-, I like it. <laughs> Human music. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it, ladies and gentlemen. First, we're going to go over Drew's list. He's got S, More Things Change, A, The Blackening, Unto the Locust, B, Burn My Eyes for some godforsaken reason, uh, Through the Ashes of Empires, and Bloodstone Diamonds, C, Burning Red, Of King of the Crown, D, Catharsis, F, Supercharger. For me, S tier, Burn My Eyes, Where It Belongs, <laughs> Blackening, where it belongs. Bloodstone and Diamonds. A first for me, because it's for a long time it was an A. Speaking of A, more things change. Unto the Locust. B tier, the Burning Red, through the Ashes of Empires, of Kingdom and Crown. C tier is empty. D tier, Supercharger and Catharsis. Thank you guys. Uh, sorry for clapping. That was probably loud and blew out your speakers or your eardrums or something of that that rather. Uh, this is Drew. He might join me for other tier lists down the line in the future. Uh, thanks for checking this out. If you could leave a like, leave a comment. How would you uh, rank the Machine Head albums in what tier? What tiers would you put each album in? Uh, do that in the comments and subscribe. Or don't. It just doesn't matter. As long as you enjoy it.